All right, guys, so it is time to go over how to play defense in NHL 19 post-October Tuner. So I released a video last week explaining all the settings and whatnot that you should be using, or at least the ones I recommend, um, to help you succeed a little bit more in NHL 19 after the latest Tuner that effectively killed the skill zone and uh, made things a lot different. So today's video, I'm going to show you how to play defense, um, now effectively using the players in their actual positions, because you can't really skill zone anymore. I'm going to go into what skill zone is if you don't know what it is already. I had a lot of comments on um, that it worked effectively, the settings and whatnot, but I also had a ton of comments on uh, not really understanding how to uh, play defense with it because it is so aggressive. So today's video is going to be all about that and show you guys individual examples of what I'm talking about and how to use this strategy set effectively. I'm no sleeps 12, and this is how to suck less at NHL 19, post-tuner defense. So guys, if you haven't seen my settings video that I released last week, go bang this link right here and uh, and go check it out real quick. You need to understand because this is going to be in conjunction with how to play defense using uh, using that strategy set. So basically, the gist of it is it's a full out aggressiveness um, because you need to attack the puck carrier in all three zones. Um, because it is much harder to actually knock the puck off of a player, and especially if you're playing someone good, it is just insanely difficult to control TOA against someone who's much better than you, because you can no longer just revert to playing right into the slot and waiting for them to you know, cross-crease or, or have the shot blocked. Um, it's really not as, nearly as effective anymore post-patch, which I personally think is fantastic. So I need to show you guys what to do now, since uh, skill zoning and whatnot is basically removed from the game. And again, this tailors to the less, uh, you know, the less elite players um, you might learn a thing or two if you are one of the elites but um, my content is mostly for the players that are looking to just kind of break that plateau and maybe get uh, you know top couple hundred so uh, let's get right into it let's take a start with on the rush uh, what a lot of people will do is switch to the furthest man back which is a defenseman and then play him the problem is, is that a lot of guys will actually control a defenseman and not do what the defenseman is supposed to do what I totally recommend here on almost everyone, unless your guy has has been beaten. So if someone sends a, sends a player on a rush and you select their defenseman, or you notice that your AI defenseman is uh, is caught and he's going to give up a, um, an odd man rush or a breakaway, um, don't select him. If you're the centerman, keep being the centerman and just skate back into the zone. What it's going to do if you actually play your position right is start them setting up the cycle. Now that's fine, but what your what your opponent is looking for, especially the good players, are for you to pull one of your players out of position. Because once you've done that, they have a one T wide open. And the reason why you can't really skill zone anymore is because bumping is gone. You can no longer just bump into the uh, into the puck carrier, and your AI is basically reverted to almost rookie form. They don't auto hold against the boards like in NHL 18. The aggressiveness they don't uh, they don't really take penalties, so they don't high stick or po check really well. Um, it's just extremely difficult to get the puck off the stick, especially if someone's good at holding it. So by playing your actual position, what you're doing is you're making sure that nothing's open, and your AI isn't dumb enough to get beat constantly uh, they will um, especially by skilled players but for the most part they play their position really well and don't get pulled out and and caught if you don't touch them so um, what I want to show you guys is where to be and what to do with each player in the defensive zone so here's a perfect example of what I'm talking about I lose the puck in the offensive zone and I start and he starts out on the rush so instead of selecting my defenseman and whatnot I let my AI control the defense on zone entry they're really good at zone entry still um, so they will pressure at the blue line and whatnot especially with the settings that I have uh, informed you guys to select and uh, it'll make them difficult but what it what it also does is it kind of messes with them because you're the centerman and you're just skating back you're kind of out of the play and they're not going to be really watching for you but more importantly is what happens once you get into the zone so let's take a look Okay, so centerman on the rush is really easy. You want to play, obviously, the center of the ice, but you want to shade the side of the puck carriers on. Again, this will limit his options. Because the defenseman is there, you can come in with your centerman, and you're kind of basically creating a little, you know, a little shield around where he can go. But then look what happens once he gets past that and into the zone. You want to, This is how you want to set up and make sure that you're in the correct position because this is exactly how it should look depending on what position you are regardless. So guys, I need to stress this as much as possible. You need to play the position of the player you have selected in the defensive zone. It is imperative post-patch. And the reason for it is because the AI will react to how you are. So if you take your left winger 
and you bring him up to where the right winger is supposed to be because you're chasing the player or kind of trying to do a two-on-one in the defensive zone, your right winger will react, and it'll be delayed, and he'll switch to the left side because the AI is somewhat intelligent, so what it'll do is it'll notice that, okay, this guy is already here. I don't need to do this. I need to go cover for him. But the problem is, is that it's a little bit delayed. It's not instant. They're not humans. So they can't see exactly when to do it. So this is what creates mismatches and goals and wide-open one-timers. So... When you're playing your position in the in the defensive zone, I've said this in other videos, but we're going to go over it again. The centerman has the slot, okay? If you are your centerman in hut or versus or EA Sports Hockey League, if you play six as you need to know this, you are in charge of the slot. Your defenseman is the one that covers the boards or the open guy on the weak side of the ice. So if you're down low in the left side of the boards, your left defenseman is the one pressuring him down low. Your right defenseman is covering the winger that's wide open in the slot. That makes sure you can't miss that because that weak side winger is the most important player in this play because if he lets that guy get open, it's in the back of the net. Your wingers it's super easy. If you don't know where to be in a wing, all you have to do is go pressure the defenseman. And because everything is set to high aggressiveness, all you have to do is just make sure that you're always in their face. And eventually what it's going to do is they're going to get frustrated because no one's open. What's happening now or what happened in previous before this patch is they could just, you know, sit and play whatever position you wanted and it didn't really matter because everyone would just sit in front of the net and nothing could get through um, or they would auto hold along the boards in NHL 18 but now with this new patch um, you know you want to make sure that you play your position exactly as it should be played next thing I want to stress is zone entry guys TOA against a top player is going to be ridiculous in this new tuner because again it is very hard to knock someone off the puck so denying them zone entry is the best way to stop them from just controlling the game the entire time because they can't get into your zone so you remember your gap control is almost the most important thing on defense other than making sure that a wide open 1T isn't done so what you want to do is when you're the defenseman and whatnot you want to make sure that when you're defending the rush that you meet him as close to the blue line as possible you don't want to just back all the way into the zone because that means you're giving them zone entry and eventually um, they might not have a clear path to the net but they're into the zone and now they can start creating plays when you deny zone entry and com gap control what we're talking about is you're slowing down or speeding up um, the time between in while they're in the neutral zone so that when it comes to them crossing the blue line or just before it or just after it you're meeting them and they either have to make a really good play pass it off go offside or they'll lose the puck so what about when they get into the zone and they start doing a cycle or, you know, they're just whipping around in your zone looking for something to go in? You need to realize what they are trying to do as far as uh, their strategy setting. Is it overload, crash the net, or behind the net? It's extremely important because it's going to adjust how you play defense no matter what one they choose. So in most cases, everyone is going to be using the overload because it's been the most popular one for, you know, like four or five games. And what the overload is, is it's three players along one side of the boards, either the left wing or the, or the sorry, either the left side or the right side with the defenseman and uh, the weak side winger or centerman in the slot, usually with an opposite handed player ready for a one timer um, that's wide open. And it's, it's extremely important that you defend it correctly. Now, what I want to mention is if they're using um, behind the net, um, I would recommend not using the aggressive strategy set and that you switch to protect net. And the reason for it is because when they're using behind the net, a really popular strategy, and I'm going to show you guys this in my how to score video, um, but there is an extremely effective way now because you can't really lose the puck all that easily and you can just hold it and kind of spin around for a while. Um, behind the net... Basically, what they'll do is they'll circle in one side of the boards down low. Eventually, someone will get open because in behind the net, either someone's been open behind the net or in front of it. And they just cycle constantly. And then what you want to do is use protect net. Don't pull any of your players out of position, but protect net will kind of stop and kind of clog up where they're going. And the overload, if you do protect net now, um, eventually someone will get open or the points will be wide open uh, with the overload, and um, it's it's not really a good go-to way to defend that strategy set anymore. Crash the net's a little bit different. Crash the net is uh, a lot more random um, because you're literally just looking for a rebound and whatnot, which is still an effective way to score in this game, but I find that rebounds aren't as bad as they were in 18, and you can't really control where they go, um, but I'm going to go over that in uh, my how-to-score video and things like that, but for this, you want to notice early on what they're trying to use. And if they're using the overload, okay, um, what you want to do is, again, don't, if you're if you're controlling your right defenseman, play right defense. Don't switch players unless you get beat and you need to make up for that. 
And what you want to do is not not you know poach at constantly or stick lift constantly. What you want to do is when they get close to the boards, hold them up against the boards because what that's going to do is it's going to make them at least slow down the play and now they have to reset the cycle and more than likely you're going to turn over the puck. Also, you want to make sure that if uh, you're staying between the net and the player, so if they're circling around constantly and notice if they're opposite handed, so if they're right side on the left wing or left wing on the right, or sorry, left handed on the right wing, they're looking for a short side wrister. So you know that if you're playing right defense, you want to play a little bit more passive and wait for them to cycle into the slot because they're going to eventually. Um, so it, it's all all dependent on what they're using, and it's uh, you need to you need to you know um, make sure that you're adapting to what they're using. Let's talk one on one. So if you're defending the rush, or if you're even uh, just on a slight rush inside your own zone, you want to make sure that you never get beat by a deke or get flat footed. So what I'd recommend is when you're skating backwards, right, you can press R1 to po check. I wouldn't spam it, but make sure that either the puck is what's going to be hit first. And if they want to spin around and deke, that's fine. But make sure that they can't get by you. So by doing this, what I do usually is I'll just turn around, have my back to them, and I'll just slow down, meaning that they're going to have to either run into me or my other players are going to catch up in the play and help me out. This is a perfect example of defending the rush and using the player that you have selected. So I get my left defenseman here, and I can't meet him at the blue line. So I just wait and wait and wait, and I slow down a little bit. Eventually he runs into me, loses the puck, and I'm out of the zone. You don't chase, and you don't go for the hit or pull another player off. I'm my left defenseman, so play left defense and make him beat you. Um, it is easier to get around the AI than it is a human control player, as long as you don't bite. You never want to be going up when they're going down unless it, you've got it timed right, and uh, it's really never usually adv advantageous to do that, um, so I definitely uh, wouldn't recommend it. Here's one of my favorite plays that I feel like a lot of people don't pay attention to. So when someone's coming in on the rush, all right, and they're left-handed on the left wing, meaning that they're, they're correct, the, the puck is, uh, is towards the goalie, not the boards on the stick, um, you know that they have to do a move or change positions because they're not off-handed, so they can't skate into the into the center of the ice and do a short side wrister up top um, because they, they aren't in position. They're not on their offhand. So you can use that to your advantage. You want to make sure that you are ignoring the guy with the puck entirely when you see a guy with the correct handedness come down the wing because you know he is looking for the pass. So if you play the pass... 99% of the time, you're going to make sure that uh, that you intercept that. Now, when they are coming in on their offhand, meaning that they're right-handed coming down the left wing, okay, you know that at some point they're going to cut into the slot because that's the easiest goal, and especially even since a new tuner, it is back now, unfortunately, but it is something that you can defend really easily, and especially considering you know that it's coming now because you look at the stick that they have right even before they enter the zone. It's extremely important to watch for this small little detail. So like I mentioned, the short side wrister is back, and it is something that you have to learn how to defend. So instead of switching and chasing and whatnot, you want to make sure that you're always in position Watch, when you have a guy who's circling into the slot, okay, you want to make sure that the defenseman you're controlling, or the centerman, you don't want to pull him out of position, it's extremely important you don't do that. But if you're your centerman in the slot, you know that he's going to at some point curl into the middle, and that's where you're going to meet him. Now, if you're the defenseman and you're following him around as he's curling around, don't watch the guy with the puck, watch your net, and make sure that you're lining your guy up with the post that the short side wrister is going to be shot on. I don't know how many goals I've defended where I just sit big buff right in front of the net and it's going to hit you in the chest because they have to go up top. So ducking down isn't really an option. So you just stand up and let it hit you. Lastly, guys, what I want to mention. The reason why the aggressive strat setting is what I use now is because it gives guys less time and space. And even though that the AI doesn't hold along the boards, it'll make guys nervous and they'll pass the puck a lot more than they want to when you have an aggressive AI set. And it means that they're spending less time looking at the plays that are open and more times looking at guys to pass to that the puck is close to because they don't want to turn it over. And if you play your position right, like I showed in the beginning of this video, and make sure that you know which guy is your guy, um, then you're gonna you're gonna have them turn the puck over a lot more one thing i do want to mention if you give up a lot of breakaways or two on ones with this strat setting adjust okay if you get two or three against and i would say in the first two periods you want to switch to less four check and the um, offensive setting um, and switch that back to defense or the the trap because what's happening is uh you're 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 too aggressive and the guy is either he has a fast team 
um, or you're just not really all that good at defending the defending the rush, which is fine, um, but it's something that you need to get better at. And the easiest way is by holding R2 and flicking down on the right thumbstick on the rush instantly, because that's going to have you auto-select your um, furthest defenseman back, which is obviously advantageous in a situation like this. Um, but that's only if um, you know you're giving up a bunch. And, uh, you know, if, as long as you shouldn't be giving up breakaways no matter what. Two-on-ones, they happen. I want to talk about two-on-ones real quick. On a two-on-one, if the guy is offhanded, he's a good chance he's going to curl into the middle, but you still have to watch the guy that he could pass to. What you want to do in this is kind of stay in the middle, but fade the guy passing. If he's the correct hand, okay, after he gets past the face-off dot, bail out and go and get the guy that is open. Because nine times out of ten, if he's on the correct hand, he's going to pass the puck. Um, and that's going to save you a lot of goals on two-on-ones. So guys, this was kind of a longer video, but it, I did want to go into much more detail about how to play defense with my new strat setting um, because it is so much different than what I've recommended in the past, and it's what I've used now, and it's working really well for me. So let me know how it's working for you guys or if anything you think I missed or want me to show you guys. Um, I'd be happy to do that in a future video. My how to score video with the settings uh, will come out uh, probably this weekend. So guys, again, thank you for all the subs, likes, and uh, make sure you comment and tell me what you think if you are using the strat setting. All right, guys, so I will see you guys next time.